Have you ever had trouble navigating the user interface of PowerDirector? Even the most seasoned PowerDirector users need help getting around the interface from time to time. So I'm going to go over the PowerDirector interface to give you a better understanding of how to get around, what the tools do, and why I feel that I kind of got this interface thing figured out. The main interface is divided into four sections, the library window, the preview window, the rooms, and the timeline. We'll start off with the rooms. Selecting a room changes what appears in the library window beneath the rooms. If you click on titles, guess what you're going to see? A bunch of titles. If you click on transitions, oh, you're going to see some transitions. Effects? You guessed it. You got some effects. We're going to go ahead and go back to media here. And you can learn about each one of these tools and the different rooms with the plethora of tutorials on my channel. But as long as we're here, let's go ahead and continue the conversation and talk about the library window. So we're under media and my media. This is the place where you see the glory of the assets you're adding to the media room. So this could be your videos, your images, your audio, all those things will live here. You can also access other things like stock media. You can access background images. You can access color boards. And there are a few other AI tools here that you can access as well. And once again, you know where you can see more about those, my tutorials. Now, also under the library window, you have the option to import media. This is how you get, or this is one of the ways of how you get media into the media library. So if you click on import, you have the option to import media files. So this will allow you to import one file at a time. Then you also have the option here to import a media folder, which will allow you to import everything that's in one folder. So if you put all of your assets into a specific folder and you want to use those for a project, you can just pick that. That way you don't have to go and pick uh, each file one at a time. You can download media from Getty Images. You can download media from uh, the Cyberlink Cloud. And you can download sound effects from the Director Zone. Now, this next button leads me to why I feel I only kind of got the interface thing figured out. And that reason is Cyberlink keeps changing the interface. It's extremely difficult to get a firm grip on where everything is when the stuff keeps getting moved around on you every other month. But I digress. So this record button didn't used to be here, but it's here now. If you click on record, you get the option to record from a webcam, record a voiceover or record your PC screen. Great to have it there. Love it. But you know, could have been looking somewhere else for it if I didn't know it was there. Now, once Cyberlink stops moving stuff all around, maybe I will fully understand the interface, but I doubt that's ever gonna happen. So our next option here is to search. So if you wanna search something, you can type in a search term and then it'll go ahead and filter it to that one item that you're searching for. You can close that out and it will close that search. You also have the filter button here. So if you click on this, you can filter between all media, uh, videos only, you can pick audio only, you can pick images only. So if you want to break it down like that, like you're like, where's that picture? I can't find that picture. Well, you can just go here and do images only and you, it'll help, you know, um, filter down your search to just a few items. Then you also have this more options button. If you click on that, you have the option to uh, view details view. You can have large icons, small icons, whatever the case may be. You can sort by duration, file size. You got different options for sorting. You can select everything there. So you want to drag it all to the timeline for some crazy reason. You can, um, you can export this to something else. You can import another library. You can empty the library and get rid of everything. You can remove unused content. So if you just thought you were going to use a file, but weren't, and you want to get rid of them, you can use that option for that. And then on the bottom left, you have this add a new tag. So adding a tag is like adding a folder. So if you click on it, you can give it a name 
and then you can drop assets in here that you want to have in that specific tag or folder. So if you want to tag in and call it, um, I don't know, a specific place or uh, something that happened in a car or whatever, you can tag it, put things in there that fit that category for that folder or tag that you create. If you don't want it, you can right click on it and you can do delete tag. And you go ahead and pick yes, and now it's gone. Next, we'll talk about the preview window. The preview window allows you to preview items in the library window. So if you left click on something in the library window, it'll just start playing in your preview window. You can click on stop. Or if you're in the timeline, you can click on the timeline. And let's say I click here. And you click on play. And it'll play what's happening in the timeline. There are player controls at the bottom left of the preview window that let you pause preview and play back your project as you edit. Now, these are seek by buttons and you can change those here and you can do a whole lot of other things. If you right click under the preview window, then you can choose to play or pause. You can stop and here's seek by. So right now I have it set to seek by frame, but if I wanted to seek by, uh, let's say segment, I could change it to that. And now when I click on the seek button, it'll jump to the next clip. So if we right click it again, you see we have more options here. We have a uh, next unit, previous unit. You can fast forward. You can take a snapshot. You can change it to a full screen. You can change your preview quality. You can change your preview mode. You can go to uh, a different second or time code. You can uh, turn your dual preview on or off if you have a second monitor. You can zoom in and you can dock or undock your preview window. Now, the icons on the lower right of the preview window are duplicates of the options that I just showed you. Um, so basically they're the same thing that you get when you right click, except for a few options. Uh, there is a button here called uh, render preview. So what this does is it allows you to, uh, render a selected part of your track. If you want to be able to speed up, uh, the viewing of it. So if you feel like it's laggy or something and you want to render it, you can do that. Um, you have a button here for your layout. So if you click on layout, you get options of how your screen can be laid out. You can do um, landscape, you can do preset, or you can do floating. This is the same thing as undocking your preview window and then you can move it around or you can dock it back if you want to. And then you have your aspect ratio. So for the aspect ratio, you can click on that and you can change your project aspect ratio. Like if I wanted it to be nine by 16, I could change it to that if I was doing a short or real or something like that. I could do that You click on it again and go back to 16 by nine. Now that we fixed that ratio, I need you to increase my like ratio. So click the like button, subscribe to power director university and click the bell. So you don't miss out on any of my tutorials and live streams. Next we'll go over the timeline. The timeline is where you arrange all your videos, photos, music, and effects for your video project. You use the timeline to view your project, add assets, and make adjustments. Getting assets to the timeline is pretty simple. You can left click on one of the items in your media library, hold down your left mouse button, and drag it down to the timeline track that you want it to be on. Now, above the timeline, you have your toolbar. The toolbar allows you to edit your assets on the timeline. You see options like crop, speed, duration, and more but the toolbar is dynamic. So it'll change based on the asset you select on your timeline. So right now I've selected the girl dancing, but if I select this video, the girl dancing is a picture. Here's a video. I click on that and you'll see everything on the toolbar changed. Now, all the way to the right of the toolbar, there's an option to customize the toolbar. So if you wanna change up the options on the toolbar, you can left click on that and make your deselections or your selections here and click on apply. I'm gonna click on cancel. On the left of the timeline, there are several icons that allow you to change the timeline. So 
there's an icon here to add additional tracks. If you click on that, you can go ahead and change up the options here for adding video, audio and video, audio or add an effects track. Click on OK and you see it added a track there. Now you also have the option here. You can click on view entire video. What that does is if you have a lot of clips and it's really long and you're scrolling back and forth, you might want to click on that so that you can see everything on the screen altogether. Down here, you have these enable or disable track. So if you click on that, then you will or won't be able to see it based on what you're selecting. You have the option to mute or unmute a track. So if you have audio on a track, you can mute it there. Then if you right click on this section, you have more options here. So you can add tracks. You can remove empty tracks. If I click on that, it'll should remove that track that I added because there was nothing on that track. If you right click on it again, you can choose to uh, enable selected track only, enable all tracks. Uh, you can lock tracks so that you can't change them up. Like let's say you want to lock a specific or let's say I want to lock a specific track so that nothing happens to it while I'm editing. Uh, we can show the chapter track. We can show the subtitle track and then we can adjust the height of the audio tracks or the video track. So if we want a track to be larger, we can click on that and it'll make that track larger. If I want it to be small, I can click on it and make it small or medium. You got all those options there. Now on the bottom of the timeline, you have this slider here that allows you to make the timeline larger or smaller. So if you don't want to just have it all fit onto the timeline, you can use this to kind of dial in to the size that you want everything to be on your timeline. And if you want to see five tips to stop jacking up your timeline, check out this tutorial. Don't forget to subscribe and purchase power director using the links in the video description to help the channel stay alive.